Hello everybody, welcome to the first episode of Let's Play Starmorn. In this series, we're going to be covering all the classes, races, factions, and uh, just about every activity in the game that you might want to try. Uh, we're going to be focusing, of course, on the new player experience and helping through many of the roadblocks that a lot of new players encounter. Uh, so first thing, here we are at starmorn.com. Uh, and we can simply click play now. That'll bring us to play.starmorn.com. And here we are on Nexus, which is the web client uh, for the game. So uh, that's basically it. Let's begin. Without further ado, uh, we're going to create a new character. And there will be future videos which cover all the different races in further depth. For now, we're going to make a T Rex, I mean, Renari. And let's see, what class should we choose? Let's, let's be a beast. Uh, and we're going to choose the best faction. And let's say monkey. No, that's, that's, that's really good. Let's just click a random. Anura. Great. Sounds like sounds like a female name. Let's let's play a female. Age 17, that sounds good. So first thing you get in the game is would you like to customize the physical cosmetic attributes of your character? Uh, we can do this later. At the end of your rope, for one reason or another, you managed to scrape together just enough money to make the trip to Donning, a backwater planet in neutral space, hoping to find success and fortune at the other end of your journey. The ride was long and uncomfortable, relying on the help of the onboard AI to plot a chart through the stars to your destination. The vessel you boarded was a clinking wreck with a barely functioning skip drive. But it was all you could afford. As you enter the planet's atmosphere, the ship starts to shake around you, warning lights a pulsing glare of red in your peripheral vision. Despite your best efforts, you begin to spiral out of control, and the last thing you remember before everything goes black is the sight of the planet's surface rushing to meet you. Welcome to Starmorn, Anora. Your story starts here. Your eyes flutter open. And we find ourselves amid the flaming wreckage on a cold, desolate planet. So the first thing uh, it's asking us to do in this introduction, as you can see, it wants us to probe the wreckage. So anything that's underlined like this, we can click. Let's click it correctly. Uh, and you can see uh, uh, it asks me to uh, now walk to the town. Up here, we have a map. Uh, down here, we have uh, different chat stuff. Uh, this is uh, uh, from my previous character. So none of this is from this playthrough. Uh, and up here we have information about uh, the different items in the room. So here we have the flaming wreckage of a ship and we can actually look at it. This is the uh, same thing as if we had clicked um, up here. Um, and it says, okay, we can look. And it just shows us this again. Uh, and of the available X's we have here, uh, we can go S, which means self. We can click this. We can also just simply type S. With the stroke of luck, there are signs of civilization on the bleak horizon. It looks like you didn't crash that far from your intended destination. You struggle across the barren, filled terrain, cold nipping at your nose. The shape of buildings begins to resolve, blocky and man-made in the distance. Let's continue. You arrive at the outskirts of, a, uh, of town long after a long, aching hike through the frozen tundra. The sound of music spilling outside of a, of a place that the sign says is called the Shakedown Cantina. This is where you're going anyway, though you wish you had arrived in a more dignified manner. It looks like the door is closed. So now it's asking us to open the cell door. Put a flag. Warm air scented with alcohol and an appetizing melange of fruit, fried 
Foods rushes out of the cantina to envelop your chilly body as the door whooshes open. Okay, well, we spent too long in the mass and we need to open the door again. And let's go ahead. As you step into the crowded cantina, warm compared to the freezing out air outside, the din seems to lessen, and you feel unnervingly exposed, the voice of a soulful female performer on stage in the back, rising above the sudden silence. After a time, right? You can sense eyes upon you, though nobody seems to be looking in your direction. A moment later, the tension lifts, and the noise returns to its previous level. The bartender, a lean, savagely scarred Bushraki woman, looks up from behind the bar, beckoning you over, the light glinting off her metallic features. So we've completed a quest, uh, and now we are asked to sit back and relax. Uh, and we want to do the bartender. Uh, I'm not going to read all of this. Uh, but uh, why do you, what brings you here, she asks. Uh, I'm a trader, I'm an explorer, I'm a gun for hire. Uh, let's say I'm an explorer. Uh, so you can either click this uh, or you can hit, uh, you can type in two or one or three or four, depending on which response that you want. I'm a developer. You, you can afford such a fancy place. Well, I think uh, my bank account is none of your business. Okay, no need to get testy. Right. So why don't you go sit at the booth in the southeast corner? I'll send any diamond belt guys who come their way, okay? okay so southeast, and let's sit at the booth. For the first time since you crash, you feel yourself relax a little. Isn't that dandy? As you wait for your contact, you watch the crowds carefully. Most people in the bustling crowds do not pay attention to you. But every now and again, you can feel courier's gazes swing your way. Minutes pass in tense silence until you notice the bartender pointing at you, directing an angry Elgin woman towards your table. Uh-oh, you, re you recognize that face. An irate Elgin explorer has arrived, uh, who's apparently named Elzy. So, three feet four. Elzy angrily plants her hands on the, on the tabletop as she sits down. Elsie says to you, what black hole did you crawl out of, Vanura? Nice to see you too, Elsie. More delighted than a bird lock in a butcher shop. Do you know how long I've been looking for you after what you did to me back on Palaki? So Elsie and I have a history, uh, it would appear. Uh, come on, Elsie. You don't still hold that against me, do you? At the table, you feel some something cold and metallic slip into your palm, and your forefinger finds the trigger of what seems to be a blaster. Uh, you aim the blaster, but hesitate. No, uh, you don't hesitate. We gotta deal with that. With lightning fast reflexes, you pull the trigger of your battered blaster, sending a bolt of laser fire into the midsection of your old rival. Uh, Elsie dies, and um, the cloak figure who passed us uh, that blaster reveals herself to be a human woman. Cassandra is her name. Hi there, Anura. It seems like you got out, uh, out of that in one piece. Hardly needed my help at all. What the who the hell are you? My name is Cassandra, Cassandra Min. I have a feeling you and I are going to be spending a lot more time together from now on if you accept my offer. Um, how did you know my name? Why did you help me in the first place? Let's, let's go straight to your offer. You're an explorer. I need someone with a curious mind who's willing to go dangerous places and do dangerous things. See, I've got a mission. Ah, what's the mission? A long story, Nura. All right. No more questions. You watch and we'll get off of this uh, rock faster than you can say Volt Cola. Uh, I really don't want to go to the core dog fight, but Cassandra is not going to let me pass by. So now we're going to wait for the core dog fight. But, alas, red scrolling warning beacon interrupts a transmission. 
the local grab ball championship. You look up towards the screen and see the alert of the Planetary Transit Authority. Loroi slave ships have been spotted in the system and their orbital trajectory is on course for donning. Okay. Uh, let's not miss the fight, even though there's a red alert. We head west and south and get to the fighting pits. Hook, Ma, and Magnet are circling each other. Uh, I I don't I don't gamble. Um, yeah, Hook Ma's the winner. In a booth above the pit, the Gordog handler handles the muzzles on the circling beasts who leap at each other with a snarl. Uh, <laughs> the Gord Dogs fight. Uh, this is a, obviously a very shady place that holds these sorts of fights. Uh, okay, so apparently I owe Cassandra, so that's fine. Let's just click this because that's too long to type, and we'll agree. And surprise, surprise, Loroi are here. Loroi or our slavers, uh, very uh, awful types. So some chaotic tumult. Uh, Tender wants me to flip the table. Here we can a table. I'm gonna flip the table. And then we want to take cover. So now it's teaching us a little bit about how we take actions. Uh, basically, when we do something, uh, it's going to consume balance. Uh, and now it's asking us to shoot the buster at the lower. Uh, it's teaching us a little bit uh, more about the game here. Teaching, uh, we'll, we'll cover wet wiring a little bit more in depth in the future. I think it also wants us to shoot, shoot it one more time. Let's... So basically, every time we recover our balance, we can shoot again. Okay. We'll leave our cover. And we'll have it. the door. And we'll put it down. So here we are on a landing strip. Cassandra Min's starship is here. There it is in our eye. So a lawyer slaver uh, all of a sudden uh, starts to approach us. Uh, glancing over your shoulder, you see a, a preserver raise a large cylindrical weapon to his shoulder and point it directly at Cassandra just as the two of you are about to reach the lowered ramp of the ship. Cassandra goes down in a sparking entangled net in an electric, electricity-laden trap that snarls around her legs and one arm, sending her into a helpless tumbling leap. A large group of new arrivals moves slowly through the spaceport, following a leader who appears to be somewhat lost. All at once, a couple of armored figures pound down the ship's ramp to assist you both inside. You run up the ramp behind a Renari and a Tukov dodging some blaster fire that blackens the hull beside you. Uh, so now we're introduced to a couple other characters, Voxy and Kotha. Uh, and Cassandra asks me, uh, where are you headed? I'm headed to the Telstine Ascendancy, and Ascendancy, the best factor. Uh, some more dialogue, which I won't read out. Feel free to pause the video. Bulkhead reverberates me in the force of another frightening impact. Okay, so now uh, we're ready to punt. Okay, so we are now in space. So this is our space map. Here is a planet, here is a station. Um, down there is dawning. Normally we cannot dock with planets, but this is a bit of an exemption. There's some more dialogue. Again, if you want to 
catch it all, feel free to pause the video or go through this uh, newbie introduction yourself. So now it's asking us, uh, we can, the, it's going to bring us now through a spaceship tutorial. Um, and if we want to skip that tutorial, we can relinquish controls. Feel free to do this uh, if you want to come back to spaceflight at a later point in time. Uh, but uh, for the time being, we're going to um, go through this tutorial. So it says to turn your ship, ship to north. We'll be covering spaceflight in, in its own separate uh, video. So you can turn north, or you can also say turn north. And the voice activated um, ship systems will take care of it. So now I'm going to do ship thrust. Uh, she wants me to, uh, Vakti wants me to take, take it slow. And we can also say slow. So slow, don't bore me to death right after saving my life. Take it up a notch. Okay, I want to ship thrust. Oh. Voice commands for increasing your speed are save thrust full. So we've reached the edge of the target system and our ship automatically stops. So uh, later on uh, in this YouTube series, I will cover a number of things such as how to get um, spaceflight onto your number pad, how to get spaceflight onto this little compass here, things that uh, make it so you don't need to type all this turning and thrusting and uh, uh, every single time you want to do anything, which can be um, quite laborious. Okay, so they want us to do some target practice. So let's ship wet status. Turns out I have a, a cannon and it is loaded with some kinetic batteries. So, Jones launch Cassandra. So we want to, uh, whenever you want to look at your surroundings in space, your beacon. Uh, we can see that there is a drone here. So we want to uh, ship turn southwest so that we face this drone up in the star map here. Um, now this is our uh, firing arc. We want to move uh, a little closer to the ship, but slow. Um, that's close enough. Now we want to target the drone. Uh, there are better ways of doing all of this, and that will be covered in the spaceflight uh, video later. And then we're going to fire our cannon. cannon. Cannons and weapons like this kind of have balance. Uh, they they have, take time to reload, basically. Okay, fly around if you want to practice some more. When you're ready to head to the solid scene and send to see, let's relinquish controls. You have finished the basic ship piloting portion of the tutorial. Well done. So, uh, great, we've got an honors line. Um, honors are basically uh, different ach achievements, basically, uh, in the game. We're the 7,186th person to complete this honor. So uh, now we are uh, zipping over to the Celestine Crossings, which is uh, the main uh, station of the Celestine Ascendancy. Um, and we shall arrive shortly. Cassandra says we're here. 
wonder how the Celestine, how Celestine has changed since last time I was here. Well, we'll cover that a lot in the faction uh, video. We'll talk about the, different, the the lore for each of the factions. Uh, and of course, we would be remiss if we did not include the best faction, which is the Celestine Ascendancy. You can now depart your ship. You try to open the airlock and down the ramp of your ship with your new companions, momentarily overwhelmed with the bustle of the crossings. The space station in orbit over Glacial 2. Welcome back to the Celestine Ascendancy, Nora. You you ever been to the station before? It's the central hub of the zone of space. From here, you can go to just about anywhere in the system. Get your armor repaired, browse the shops, upgrade your ship. It's got everything. Hang on, gotta check my mind sim. Cassandra ducks at one side and squints in the middle distance, the universally recognized body language of someone accessing the comms. Okay, so now we have a uh, holographic bot. What does this do exactly? Your entry is being recorded and your identity is being filed by the, filed by the authorities of the Celestine Ascendancy. Have a nice day. Cassandra wanders by you, glancing at the parting touch. She grins. Make a friend? Hey, so while we're, we have a quiet moment, Sound of uh, screaming rings through the station, and the crowds begin to scatter and vanish down corridors and through airlocks, leaving a docking area empty but for the sound of approaching boots. Cassandra groans. It's always something. Tighten up, Honora. Sounds like we've got incoming. Sounds like at least three for fact slate. Better take cover. Let's take cover. Oh, there's nothing here to before we flip the branch. So, uh, we now have uh, some savers, so that blaster at Slayer. Okay, I better keep your weapon holster for now, that's fine. So, they're fighting off the slavers. Um, a couple fires a shot, which glances off the scarred face slaver's cheek, leaving a bright red cut. Ah, uh, now we're ready to shoot the blasters. Let's continue to do that. Uh, we got a quest. Oh, we obtained a Laura, and now we unwielded the blaster. No, we cannot. So then we get clunked in the in the head and. We move to the blackness behind the eyelids. Drift in a black sea of consciousness, unconsciousness, you float oblivious to everything. After a timeless time, you, are, you become aware of a sensation of dragging movement, sluggish thoughts. A little while after that, you remember that you have a head, and it is killing you. A cloning facility aglow with hollow hands. I think she's waking up, referring to me. Hey, how many fingers am I holding up? Say three. Okay, good. Um, so just a little bit more dialogue. Uh, it wants us to um, uh, mend our systems. We'll talk a little bit more about wet wiring in the future. So it's saying that if we ever need help, uh, we can use the newbie channel. And this is a very important source of information. A lot of players are often on the newbie channel answering questions. Uh, sometimes at uh, less uh, active times of the day, it might be hard to get your question, but just keep trying um, and uh, you will eventually get an answer. Uh, so Kendra has disappeared. Um, the slavers got Kendra. Um, but what do we do now? We gotta figure out how to fix this. Now we get strong. Now we get her back. Foxy not just nods along, listening intently. Okay, go on. Put the feelers out there and try to find out where she was taken. As for you, you need to get to Omni Station. Talk to Raxi Lamentation. Ask her where to go, uh, where you can find a battle master to teach you. 
practice, train, get better at fighting. When we contact you next, Cassandra's location, you better be ready to go. She saved you. You over. Clear? It's clear. Omnitation. Got it. Okay, so uh, we're almost at the end here of the newbie introduction, and this is where we'll close off the video. Uh, we'll just get into um, the Celestine crossings. So you're now free to wander storm on at will. Uh, it's uh, talking about all the different uh, help guides and things like that. Uh, we can learn about transports, landmarks, uh, and you can also, um, I recommend clicking this. Uh, I'm not going to do it because this character is not going to have a very long life. Um, actually, let's do it. And now we have a newbie honor. So now I've announced to the game that I exist, uh, and we are here in the Celestine Crossings, and uh, in the next video we will go visit Araxi, and um, oh, we have um, uh, Poet says oh, welcome to Starmorn, Eodali says welcome to uh, the faction, um, and we'll get to uh, these different channels and changing colors of, of the different channels at a, uh, at a later time. Uh, but yes, okay, let, let's close this off. Next time we'll, we'll get some skills, uh, we'll practice some hunting, um, and we will uh, basically uh, try to finish this quest. Uh, Kotha has told you to grow in strength, but do so uh, by whatever means necessary. Clover says, welcome to Nora, you can speak uh, to us here using FT and then your message. Please let us know if you need any help. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that was the first episode of Let's Play Star Wars.